Yo, welcome everybody to the Words Matter podcast. Recording from the Gentleman's Factory in Brooklyn. We on Flatbush Avenue, overlooking Brooklyn. To the right of me, got my man, news guy for a long time, J.R. Dion. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Thank you for having me. How are you, man? I'm good. It's, good. it's been a while. I haven't saw you since, I uh, haven't seen you since 2015. It's been almost, what? Seven years, really. Seven, yep. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> you were rapping back then. Jr. is a is a rapper, um, and he was rapping back then, and you know he's still sticking with it. Um, years later, uh, I remember you were showing me. You uh, I remember when you had like a uh, it wasn't even like an iPhone back then yeah. when you was working. <laughs> when we was at uh, it was at Foot Locker back in them days. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, tell tell. Tell, tell me, tell everybody about yourself. Who are you? I'm J.R. Dion, um, rap artist, writer. Um, been doing it for a long time. Uh, based, uh, based out of the Bronx, New York. Grew up in Ohio as well. Um, that's basically me, man. I just, that's what I do. <laughs> and uh, when and where does your story start as a rapper? My story start, well, it was definitely start in Ohio. That's where mm-hmm. I grew up. Um, I was probably like around 10, watching my brothers and yeah. his friends do it. It brought me closer to the music. I always was had music around me, but watching them do it, I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. Like actually rap and be on a song mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So well, I would say that's where it started. And But actually like recording, it would be like around my teenage years, probably like 14, mm-hmm. 15. That's when I started recording and putting out like little local projects um, during that time. But yeah, that's where it all started, honestly. What what kind of music. what kind of music was your brother making? Oh, rap, rap what, for sure. What was uh what did his his subject matter consist of? Um, you know, back then it was more like about just flashy mm-hmm. style, and I got the money and <laughs> I'm fly and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah, that was cool. Always cool. In in Dayton, uh, besides mm-hmm. your brother, who uh. Who else was a, a, a primary resource for you, like a, a, a direct example of somebody that that rapped that you that you saw and was like, I can be that, I can aspire to be that because it's it's close to me, so you know it's it's in my reach. It was, during that time, it was probably the most popular artist at the moment. When I was ten, I was probably so around that time. It was probably Jay. Mm-hmm. Was a rapper that was the, like the hottest at the moment. Jay Z. Yeah, I always looked at those rappers because they had longevity. So I felt like I could always do it. I mean, I always felt like I could do something that I seen somebody else do, because they did it. Mm-hmm. So they they gave you like hope to mm-hmm. be able to do it themselves. Because we all human. Yeah. If somebody else can do it, then I felt like I could do it. So I would say um, him as far as um, people that I don't know, but um. Other than that, I mean, I, people. Other than my brother, I don't know. I mean, Brilliant. I was always around my family a lot, so I'll probably it would probably be somebody in my family. There yeah, wasn't nobody yeah. locally at all, really. Just family members. That's it. Yeah, that's mm. pretty much it. Yeah. Do you do you believe that environment impacts? subject matter and and rhyme style or just everything just the way you write uh the air from beats that you have do you think that your environment affects those things um i would say yes because really i come up with different lyrics and different songs based on things that i'm going through mm-hmm. and things that i'm around so it could be something i've seen that gave me an idea, you know what I mean? Throughout the day, anything like that. And as far as um, beat selection and stuff like that, it's really, I like a lot of different type of music. So I would always try to find something that's new, yeah. that doesn't sound like that song over there, or, mm-hmm. or it's just a mixture of all everything. You know what I mean? That's what I try to find because that's the way I feel like you can create your own sound. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Environment definitely plays a part mm-hmm. in the whole production of the music. Yeah. yeah. We grew up in a time where uh where hip hop 
was, you know, and still this day is the most uh, popular genre of music in the world. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we were just talking about your environment affecting um, your music. I feel like now, because the internet is so popular and hip hop is the biggest genre of music in the world, and we have so much access to what everybody else is doing all over the world, all over the country, that you can't really tell where a person's from based on the music that they make anymore. Do you think that people can tell where you're from based on the music that you make? Not based on just the music, no. Yeah. If you hear some, you may not know where they're from. <clears throat> but if you see them like on social media and things mm -hmm. like that, like you know what I mean? How they talk, how yeah. they dress, stuff like that. You'd be like, oh, yeah. this person from New York. Yeah. Or, this person may be from Charlotte, mm -hmm. something like that. You know what I mean? So it the music itself, no. Because a lot of it is like, I don't, I don't really like to say this because it's just different. It's just a different time in music. But a lot of it kind of sounds the same sometimes. Yeah. And it's like literally the same. Mm -hmm. um, so no. I don't think you can, because some people, some artists may like another artist and they make songs just like that mm -hmm. artist. So, no, I don't think you can really tell where a person is from. That was your question, right? Uh, you well, no, where I, a person is from. I was, ask, the music. I was asking, yeah, can, is, can somebody tell, uh, can somebody determine where you're from based on the kind of music that you make? That's Yeah, that's what I was asking. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Not other, other yeah, yeah. artists. Okay, got you. But, um, nah, I don't think so. No, nah. because I always mix it up. Like mm -hmm. my project coming, the next project I have coming, which is dropping uh, January 21st, Friday, January 21st. It's a mixture of everything. Like you, you may have a sound. I have a song that may sound like I'm from the Detroit mm -hmm. right now. The era, you know, the music that they got going. That fast now. pace, yeah. um, up tempo. Yeah, the yeah, high I BPM. Like that. I have mm -hmm. a, um, a track is like a Travis Scott style. Like you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um. And then, you know, and then they have songs that, you know, that's New York hip hop, you know, that's New York sound. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say no. I don't really think a person would know where I'm from based off my music. No. I've heard in interviews, people like rappers from uh, different podcast interviews or radio interviews, when, a, when an artist from the Midwest is being interviewed, they'll say that their musical influences come from everywhere because... You're literally in the middle of the country. Yep. Do you think that's true? That's hundred. That's facts. Yeah. Because you're gonna get a mixture, like they said before. You're gonna get a mixture of everything. Like where I'm from, that's people that's into the East Coast rap. There's people mm -hmm. that's into straight down South trap music. Mm -hmm. There's people that's into West Coast sound, Snoop. Yeah. Like grew up on Snoop, uh, Nipsey stuff like that. Mm -hmm. People into that. It's all a mixture. <laughs> that's a. I feel like where my sound comes from, the Midwest of that mixture of music that the Midwest has. Or you might be into funk because a lot of the yeah. funk music comes from mm -hmm. the Midwest. From actually where I'm from, a lot of people that did funk music is from Dayton, Ohio. The, the, that great migration is like yeah. the same from the South. Right, right. All the same black people move to that area. Exactly. So the influence of the same, yeah. Right, right. And the, you got people from everywhere that move to those type of places because, you know, it's better... You get a house, the mm -hmm. cost of living is cheaper. So mm -hmm. those people brung the music that where they came from and brung it there. So that's why I feel like it's a mixture. So yeah, that does have an impact on the music that I create for sure. Yeah, because I know that people probably were thrown off by Bone Thugs when they came out because they are from Cleveland, but they had a West Coast sound, those that those synthy beats. Yeah. And, and and then they were assigned to Easy E, so it was, you know, people were kind of confused. I mean, it took me. I didn't even know. I mean, I'm not even old enough to grow up in the time where Bone Thugs was really popping when they first came out. But I know that people were thrown off, and I was thrown off when I found out they were from Cleveland. I thought they were from L.A. Yeah. <laughs> I feel. I always felt like too, like a lot of like our accent. The accent in Ohio was kind of similar to. That. Cali. Yeah, I say that in Detroit also. Yeah. They have a similar accent to to LA, but that goes back to what I just said. Same black people moved from the south to uh the Midwest and to LA. Great yeah. migration all come from that same area. So 
you know, all all pretty much the same, just environmental factors are a little different, shapes the culture. Right. Yeah. That's dope though. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um tell tell us about your subject matter. My subject matter, I feel like it's a it's a little mixture of everything, but my main subject matter is to push the narrative of like I was explaining earlier, when I seen somebody do it, I'm like, they did it, so I know yeah. I can do it. It's possible. Like it's obvious mm-hmm. it's possible. You just seen somebody do it, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that was my main narrative in the music. Like this is cliche, but like motivational. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just showing people that it may some music it sounds like tough love mm-hmm. the way it comes out, but it's really just pushing. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying yeah. to push people that's into hip hop to have the mindset that they can achieve whatever goals yeah. that they have in place. That's my main narrative. But you know, we got some songs that's you know for the party, for the club, mm-hmm. for the girls. But even in those songs, it's more like a up, uplifting. It's not like a um, like um, just you know how you put um, what's that word? <laughs> um, like talking bad about women and stuff like that. Um, misogynistic. It, yeah, yeah, not not like that. It's more of my experience plus. A uplift a woman like on my last project i had a song called young queen mm-hmm. and that was for the women but it was show them that they have the power to be whatever they want to be as well mm-hmm. if, if for those that feel like they don't i made that song for them but um yeah my main narrative is to just go out and achieve everything you put your mind to that's the main narrative of my music yeah i you know, I was about to ask a question about that, uh, about your music being motivational, because you said in uh, on the, on the intro of, I believe it was your last project, uh, up to something. Yeah. Yeah. You said, I see my life. I see a Billy on the schedule. If you don't chase your goals, you might really become regretful. I ask hustle. I might I might be uh, quoting you wrong. I ask hustle. Like why would they? Why could they ever ever neglect you? X acts opportunity like why, you know double entendre. <laughs> X acts opportunity like why they ain't select you. Just know you great. Hope you find out before it's late, or somebody gonna snatch the fool right off your plate. Yeah. So, so why do you lean into motivation into your music and 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 not other uh, topics as much? Because honestly. Um... There's been times in my life where I was at that point where I wanted to stop, you know, stop chasing the thing that I love. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I had to pick myself up. I had to write words of encouragement for myself as well to help me get through whatever I was going through at the time. Mm-hmm. And also, I want to help other people as well. So that's where things like that come from. And I feel like also... In a business standpoint, that will never die. Like mm-hmm. that's something that's timeless. Motivation is timeless. Mm-hmm. So that's another reason why I put that in my music as well. It's true. It does carry into different worlds, different fields. And you being an artist, you know, you're you're a creative person. So I think creatives do need that push because I think creatives, I think we, you know, there's no, there's no way to statistically prove this, but I think that we feel self doubt and, and, uh, a lot of times a lack of motivation. We have a lot of different points in our life where we go through that. So you need that upliftment. You need to have somebody in your corner to uplift you because you may be doing something that nobody in your family, nobody in your immediate circle is doing. So they're looking at you like you're crazy for even pursuing it. So, you know, where do you get that motivation from? And if you don't have that, 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 uh, the support system, you know, you, you could fall off track. Yeah. My motivation comes from, I watch a lot of different interviews Mm -hmm. online, uh, just, you know, motivational stuff or just like an artist interview. 
talking about their life and the things that they went through to get there. Because honestly, I always was like a closed person. I didn't really like, you know, know, introverted. Yeah, introverted or not speaking, you know, how I feel. Uh Um, So I either had to write it down or go find some inspiration somewhere online. You know what I mean? Uh Because we have access to that now. Um, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then just talking to different family members, it may be indirectly, like I'll tell them, like, I'll just start talking about a situation, but not really saying that's what I'm going through. You know what I mean? Just, you know, because I don't want to put that burden on nobody. Mm. But yeah, that's where I um, got all like, that's how I pick myself up, honestly. And then sticking to doing the music. Music is was helped me get through a lot of stuff, too. Like, like therapy. Listening to me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Train rides with the headphones. That helped me. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? You write um, physically, write on yeah, paper. For sure. Yeah. yeah. You you know you like write on the phone or. No, nah, oh, on paper. No, no, I no. write on paper. You write on I your write phone. On my phone. Okay. Yeah. Do you? Because you know a lot of people. It's it's trendy. I remember when Jay Z was like, he doesn't write. You know, he writes in his head. And then Wayne was like, he does the same thing. And they said Biggie did the same thing. And now every rapper says they don't write anymore. They just write in their head. But they're really not writing. They just punching in when they right, right. when they uh record. Just wanted to know if you know you're a writer. Um what I kind tried of, to do that. <laughs> you trying to do it? <laughs> yeah, I could do that like for like a hook. Mm-hmm. I could do that because that's something that's it's not as long as a verse. It's re- more repetitive. Yeah, it's more, more yeah, repetitive. easier to yeah. remember. So I could do it for that, but like for a full verse, nah. I tried to do it. I wasn't talking about nothing. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was like I couldn't. I wasn't switching up the cadence and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. like, nah, I don't, don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me write this in my phone. <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> forget the forget the whole to, verse. Forget the trend. I'm, I'm gonna stop trying to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> um. A lot of people that are rappers were great writers in school. Were were you a great writer in school? That's crazy you say that because I actually did I had like poetry contests. Mm. I did a speech contest. I said a speech at like the board of education meeting. Mm. I used to do that type of stuff when I was younger, like elementary. In middle school, that's when I started thinking I was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't want to do all that stuff no more. But <laughs> like elementary, I used to do that a lot. What kind of spelling bees? Or mm, yeah. yeah. What kind of? I into, I'm still into like pronouncing words. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. That. I'm into that. Like if I see crazy names, mm-hmm. I'm like, let me get this name right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now that 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 Merriam-Webster app <laughs> on the phone, that dictionary app is a definitely <laughs> beneficial. Yeah. Um. What, what kind of speeches were you were you reciting? Um, I had one. It was, that was actually for school. That was I think for church. I think my aunt got me into it. It was just mm-hmm. about God is love or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think another one was based off a book. I don't remember what book it was. But it was just like my my take on the book or something like that. Um, yeah, that was it. That was it. But, I remember the God is love joint because you it had to be like a thousand words. That's a lot. Like that's that. a lot for a for a kid. Yeah, I was like eleven, probably eleven, ten. Yeah. Do you think that? And I had to memorize it. Wow. Like you could, you're not gonna win the contest if you go up yeah. to the sheet. No, I remember. I remember in middle school <laughs> having a, a a speech, and you have to memorize a speech. And I, I was I was amazed at myself that I could do that, but yeah, felt like I was Jay Z or something. I wasn't rapping <laughs> though. <laughs> yeah, you had to like sell it too. You had yeah. to perform. Yeah, this, yeah, you really a lot. Like, like I'm. <laughs> you had to put some emotion in it. You can't mm-hmm. just say it like you're reading it. Hey, mm-hmm. So that was dope. That was a dope experience. Shout out to my aunt for me in that. <laughs> yeah, it were shout out to your aunt. What do you think makes a good writer? And this this could be applicable to a rapper, singer, uh, journalist. What do you think makes a good writer? Um, 
As far as music, what makes a good writer of a song would be the way you say it. It don't really matter the words. I feel like the way you say it is key. Um, I agree. If if you can make a, a timeless song with great lyrics, with substance, mm-hmm. And thing like that, you you a great writer. Um, as far as just writing, I feel like you gotta make something correlate. It has to be a problem somewhere going on, cause yeah. you know, drama is always good. Um, a story about I, something describing a character. I yeah. feel like you need that, um, and that's basically it. I feel like that's the formula you use for all songs for songs for me it's yeah all of that in one all of that in one I feel like yeah if it is a story other than that if it's just a song where it's just I want you to feel what I'm saying it's mm -hmm. just make the way I say it the way I say it and great lyrics at the same time like saying in a way saying the same thing in a different way that somebody may have said, but mm -hmm. put it in your way, how you seen it in a way nobody ever heard before. It's like, oh, what did he say? <laughs> oh, that was dope how he put that. You yeah. know what I mean? That's, I always think about that when I'm writing. Are you, because I, I don't know if you consider yourself like like this, but you're not you're not really the, the punchline um, heavy rapper, but you did have in, in that line that I just... Repeated to you did say something that you know it was like a double entendre like the X and the Y and then you was like ask why <laughs> like what I my a go to is like trying to make make it rhyme twice in, in two lines like two bars I don't know if I'm saying this right but like I say um, I don't know how to put it I don't know how to really explain it but <laughs> that's I try to do that that's my go to. If I want to just really go out there and go with bars and like yeah. make you the, like go crazy with words, but um, as far as punchlines, the starting off, I was into that. Yeah, starting that was off, that. That was that era. I was into a lot of Cassidy and, <laughs> and Wayne, so I was punchline crazy. But now it's more like getting the point across. Mm -hmm. Getting the point across now. Yeah. And and your your taste evolves as a as a rap fan. Because, yeah, I could, I could agree. I could agree. I never rap, but you are fascinated by the art form so much that you're into the, the wittiness and the cleverness, the double entendres. Then you start to experience more things as you get older, and you want to hear things that you can relate to. You want to see the world in the music, because right. art is a reflection of reality. And when I and when I started recording myself, I got more into the production of it, like the mixes. How they could have just put a like a a plug in or effect on a beat at this yeah. at the perfect moment. Like real, real I nerd listen, shit. Yeah, I yeah. listen to that now uh, more than anything. <laughs> or what? like a mel a crazy melody, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I wrote that melody. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I I listen to music like that. Now. Tapping into your artist's brain. Yeah, I watch videos like that as well. The the same way, like the transitions in mm -hmm. videos. Like they had this car going past at the perfect moment. <laughs> yeah, like it really made you feel it. People don't even really realize details why you like this video so much. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> because they put things in a different room to give you the feel. Like you was in the video, your damn self, like. Are you are you that analytical when it comes to other genres, other art forms, uh, like uh, watching a movie or a TV yeah, show? Movies yeah, movies too. Movies too. Like man, they they that the way they zoomed in on that mm -hmm. <laughs> was perfect. It made you feel like, wow, that's crazy. Or the way they told a story in the beginning, or showed you a location where they was at. It made you like, damn, that was in the '60s. That's why it looked like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it made you think about it a little bit more deeper than just watching it. And the crazy stuff that goes on is obvious, but 
what what makes a a good artist? I already asked you what makes a good writer. What makes a good artist? Makes a good artist. I feel like finding a way to. Honestly, I honestly, what makes a good artist is just being you. Yeah. Being you, having dope music, um, finding those people that really love love you, like for who you are. I think that's it. That's it. And then just pushing and just being careless, like this is me. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I think that's what makes a good artist. And always keeping that vibe around people, being having a good vibe. Mm -hmm. I think that's what makes a good artist. Yeah. What's a good vibe to you? A good vibe is, it's always like, you feel connected to that person, like you knew them for a long time or something like that. Like, yeah, just simple as that. Like, maybe it, it was just easy for me to be around that person. You know what I mean? That's what I feel like is a good vibe. Is that? the mind state that you go into when you collaborate with artists? Yeah. 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 I feel like, yo, this is us. This is, yeah. this is what we doing right yeah. now. Like, this ain't me. I'm not over here doing this. You're not over here yeah. doing this. We doing this right now. Yeah. That's how I make people, that's how I want people to feel when they dealing with me. Like, we doing this. You a part of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna have you here because I need you here. Yeah. Like, this benefits us all, so. That's how, that's my vibe. I feel like you're a team player. Where you where do you get that that team player mentality from? Did you play sports? I I think I get that from my family. Yeah, because they so open with everybody. Like like if you you could have been in a relationship with a person, you're not with them no more. But my family still yeah they still part of the family. Mm -hmm. Like that's how my family always been. They always had had that like that open door for for anybody. You know what I mean? Just give anybody a chance. Yeah. So I, that's where I get that from, for sure. Both sides of my family too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's grow up with, grow up with love, grow up with uh, that support, and uh, it reflects in the music because if you didn't grow up like that, you probably wouldn't make music that's so committed to motivating people. If you didn't grow up like that, uh, I want to go back to. Your upbringing, um, well, not really upbringing, but you moved from New York. What what year did you move, or how old were you when you moved to I New was York? Like nineteen. Nineteen. When I moved back in what was that? Twenty ten. Like nineteen, yeah. What I was, was actually. I was I born I was born here in New York. Yeah. I was like five when we moved to Ohio. I was there to like eighteen. I lived in Georgia for like a year, and then I went back to Ohio for like two weeks. And I said, nah. It's yeah, just, I need I need fat coming from Atlanta. Oh back yeah, to Ohio, I needed something a little bit more faster. Yeah, but I had family here in New York, so I was like, I'm gonna just go to New York. I had nothing. Yeah, like I literally just came here. Luckily, I had family here that you know let me stay there for a while, you know for a minute, and then I just had to find my way. Yeah, that. you think you the main thing was that's the best because I was into music then too, so. I felt like this was the best place for me to be at that moment. Now I feel like it don't matter where you at. You can be anywhere and do music. It's true. But at that time, I felt like this was a place I needed to be for music. Do you think that, oh, I forgot what I was about to ask. Um, it's, a, it's a culture shock. It's a culture shock moving from place to place, especially in, in informative years, 19 years old. I moved to good places though. Yeah, you so did move to good places. You moved to Atlanta, movie. yeah. But it's yeah. still, you know, you go from Ohio slow, you move to Atlanta, then you move to New York. And I think New York is probably way faster than Atlanta. Oh yeah, for sure. Ain't nothing like this New York. Yeah. <laughs> no place like New York. <laughs> but um, I have family to support. So they made it easy for me, like, you know what I mean? That they show me yeah. how the city is working over that. But here, I, I used to come here in the summer. Mm -hmm. A few summers I came here, like, just, you know, just to rock out with family and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I always told myself I was going to come back to New York yeah. at some point. It's, it's, it's It inspires you, especially opportunity, especially rap, because you grew up on New York rap. 
uh, how does how does moving affect your subject matter? It affects it a lot because that's a lot to do with transitions. I actually mm. been writing about different people's transitions in life, like that had a similar thing like me, like moving from place to place. Uh, how was it when you first decided to do that? Um, so that's a big influence on the music, different transitions and things like that, different changes in life. As when I was working with you, yeah, I was cha- I was a lot of transitions yeah. in that. Like I was working over here, then I was working in that store, then I was working in that store. Wow. <laughs> so that was a lot of transition for me. Um, uh, a lot yeah. of life experience yeah, life to put in the music. Exactly. Um, how do you make a song? How do I make a song? I find a beat. Definitely got to find a dope beat, which can take five minutes to five hours looking for beats, like a perfect for that feel you have at the moment. Um, come up. It depends how the beat makes you feel like, like, and I listen to the production of the beat. Like, okay, the hook goes here. The hook would sound good on this part. And if that's first, then that's what I'm going to do first. If the verse sound good on the first part, then I'm going to do the verse. So it all depends. It all depends. But yeah, that's some basic process. The basic process is that. Mm, could you go Could you go more in depth, like, you know, step by step? When you hear a beat, or even before you hear the beat, before you even have any beats, and you say, I want to write, I want to write a song. What do you say to yourself? Like, what? What do you put your your mind frame in to to get ready to write? It could be I was just listening to some new music. Yeah, and I was like, damn, I gotta, I'm about to get in here. <laughs> I gotta get going because they just dropped some shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some yeah. fire. So let me get, let me get, let me start writing. Or it could have been, you know, an interview I was watching or a movie I was watching. Anything like, you know, it just it's been a couple days since I made a song. Let me. Yeah try to go and just listen to some beats real quick. Um, that's it, really. Music come to me easily, so it's just hearing it, you know what I mean? Or I might just be listening to YouTube or something and a beat come on yeah. out of nowhere, cause you know, you know it's algorithms and mm-hmm. whatever you was listening to before. Yeah. Was really come out. So it may be that, anything. It depends, it's different, it's different this time. But as far as the music itself, it's just the beat, however the beat, I feel like sounds like what type of song it is gonna be. In your life as a rapper, cause you know, you had a you had a life, you probably been rapping. You say you've been rapping since you were 14, so you've been rapping more than half your life. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Can you tell me in every era of you as a rapper, how were there were there many changes in your 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 writing process? Yes. Um, well, not the <clears throat> the writing process. No, my writing process hasn't really changed much. It it was always been like find a beat. I could say when I was younger, it came to me more faster when I was younger because it was just exciting, more exciting. Mm-hmm. Now that I've been doing it for a while, I still exciting. This is what I love to do. But back then, it was like, "Yo, we about to, I'm about to go to the yeah. studio." Yes. <laughs> and now it's like easy access to the studio yeah. right there. Like, but um, and I ain't know it was that easy back then. I just, I just thought that shit was bigger than ever. But I ain't know it was that simple to just book a space and stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I guess that's the difference. That's the only difference. Me not knowing like the how easy it was to access being able to even go in and create music. Mm-hmm. So I guess that impacted my writing process. At your age now, compared to when you were in your teens, did uh was it the same where you'd hear a song? And say, damn, they just dropped some shit. Like, what do I, like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I'm motivated now. Is it like that now? 
Yeah, sometimes. To, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. Mm-hmm. It's like that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Cause I listen to new music like every day. Like I go to the page, see what new music drop. I want to hear new shit. Like I want to hear, like I, if I'm hearing a lot of repetitive, I want to hear some other artists from somewhere. Yeah. Weird. You know what I mean? I want to just hear how that sound. If I vibe with it, and then if it's dope, then I'm like, see, man, I gotta let me go in here and try to make a different sound. You know what I mean? Not biting off what they yeah. did but you know that gave me the motivation that is somebody out there got yeah. some beats that sound different mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean so i guess yeah that's it bro. who would you who would you liken your style to like who who's who's comparable to you to me if 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 anyone or has there been anyone in the past uh Nah, I don't feel like it's, I don't, nah. I don't feel like, when I, cause I even ask people like, when you hear my music, you think I sound like somebody else? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They, I don't, nah, I don't think that, I think that's, I'm in my own lane. Yeah. Man. Honestly, I feel like I'm in my own lane. Not like no cocky stuff or whatever. Yeah. I just feel like I found my, like, that's J.R. Dion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When you hear me, like when you hear anybody, when you hear the dope artists that, you know, people consider the dopest, was like, oh, that's him. You know what I mean? So I feel like I'm my own lane. Where you, where does that name come from? Uh, I'm a junior. Okay. And Dion, that's my middle name. Okay. So that's where the JR Dion came from. Straightforward. I was young JR before, but I ain't gonna be young. Everybody, that. everybody was yeah, young at exactly. one point. <laughs> young, Lil. <laughs> Then the Lil's came back past few years. That was a Lil everything, early 2000s, mid 2000s. What keeps you going? Um, Waking up. Just knowing that I have another chance, you know what I mean? Um, And I write out some goals that I have for the month. Mm, yeah, writing things down. Yeah, writing helps. things down help me. I got a board where I look at. In the Vision morning. board? It's not really a vision board. It just got different phrases and words that I want to always keep in mind. Like I can and uh, family, health, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. it just be words. I just write words down. You know what I mean? That's it, it will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of, you no, know, we might be able to do that. Nah, it will yeah, happen. It will. If, yeah. we do, if we do this. It will work. <laughs> it's, it's it's hard to break out of that. I'm gonna try to, or I might. You know what that I mean? mentality, it's hard to break out of that. Yeah, that's why I had to. I have to see it. Yeah. Catch myself, like you know mm-hmm. what I mean. And I look at it when I wake up. It's right next to my bed, so it's right there. It's the first thing I'm gonna see if I look at it. <laughs> Oh, look, somebody waking me up. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you use, you know, writing things down, writing goals down, um, different things to, different methods to self-motivate. But were there times where you ever wanted to quit? Quit? No, not actually just quit. Even if it wasn't like really trying to do it business-wise, I never wanted to quit making music. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just love it so much. Like it's always been a part of me. Oh, half more than half my life, like you said. Yeah. So it's hard to just quit. But as far as like the business wise, one year I told myself, all right, it's the last year I'm gonna do this. I'm yeah. Try to do this, you know what I mean? Try to go out and do shows, like really invest my time and money into this. Um, I did have that mindset before, but I told him, I had to also look at myself like, were well, you going a thousand percent? Nah, I never reached a point where yeah. I was going like a thousand percent. Yeah. Like, Even now? Oh, uh, nah, now that's my mindset. Yeah. Right? I'm going a thousand percent with this. Like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it for real. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm gonna go out there, I'm, I'm gonna go find connects, I'm gonna go network, I'm gonna do all the shows possible. I'm gonna put music out consistently, do videos, interviews to show people me more like who I am I'm gonna do that like a thousand percent now and then we'll go with those results so determine whether or not you know what I mean 
it's the right thing for me and not, you know? But that's all based off me, not nobody else telling me, nah, you need to yeah. forget that. You ain't never, you know? So that's what, that's where I'm at with it now. That's, that's admirable because a lot of people need that, that push, even if they know that what they're doing at the moment is, is self-destructive or what they're not doing at the moment is self-destructive, but it's hard. You know, you're just so in your head that you're like, ah, uh, I just, you know, be safe. Do you ever, have you ever wanted to just be safe and, and do a plan B and just continue to, you know, not go a thousand percent with your music? And I feel like you could do it all. It, yeah. it could be all one thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could do everything that you wanted to do or which, what people consider a plan B. You could put that into just what you do. Yeah. And I'm put it in that category. That way, no matter, you won't feel like something didn't work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just put it all in one and go for everything. Mm-hmm. Cause it's possible for you to go for everything that you want to go through. Whatever comes first, it comes first. But go for everything. Yeah. Go for everything. Every opportunity. Every opportunity. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. Um, just go for everything. You know what I mean? If you into you find like you into something, do that too. Mm hmm You do everything. <laughs> that good. that takes me into uh just asking about because you put out three projects within the past four years. You put out Project 2020, you put out Project in 2019, and then you put out Project, you put out two projects in 2019? 2019, two projects, yeah. and then end of 2020, I had a project coming out. Yeah. yeah, and you know, that's a lot of music. In a, in a short period of time, a lot of times artists will put out one project once every two years when i knew you and you started rapping it wasn't i didn't know if there was any were there any projects you were putting out back then no nah, i was just recording you were just recording putting it. everything in the tuck were you playing it safe like you said. <laughs> so you were you were nervous to put out your music <laughs> not nervous i just wanted to put it out right and i just yeah. put it out and then it just disappears you know yeah I mean? like but i didn't really educate myself on how mm -hmm. and that was it. I just didn't educate myself on yeah. that. I can't blame it on nothing else. You know what I mean? So that's why I didn't really come out. Do you think that also you putting out music more frequently now and having more of a social media presence now, is that influenced by the time that we're in where, you know, it's a, it's a microwave era. It's, it's an era where artists are putting out two more than two projects a year always on putting out a song they'll put out they'll put out songs traditionally artists will put out songs that are on their upcoming project or a project that just came out artists will put out songs that aren't even on any project just to keep their name in the conversation of yeah. of the hip-hop world do you feel pressured to to do those same things no that's no pressure it's just it's just it makes all it makes sense when everybody's on yeah like that's what people go now for everything like we used to go here to go get cds or mm -hmm. we used to go you know that piff to listen to mixtapes you know what i mean mm -hmm. but now it's like you can get everything in one shot social yeah. media boom it's only right to do it it's just it just makes all the sense put out content you could show people what you're doing all across the world people have access to what you're doing on that app or whatever app and it just makes sense it just makes sense what are the mental hurdles that i know you're big on motivation and writing things down and and yeah self-motivation and you you know you you don't really rely on people to to push you but what do you think are the mental hurdles that can stop another person from really being the best person that they can be um fear yeah that's it it's just fear honestly fear is the only thing that can actually you fear is the only thing that can really stop a person i feel like 
and not believing they can do it. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is also fair. Which is fair. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's all fair. That's yeah. it. And which is something that that people create in their mind. So only person that can really stop them is them. Unless I mean, but it's hard. It's hard, like you said, to get through those mental things. Mm-hmm. Um some people do need an extra push. You know what I mean? Some people don't get the opportunity to experience a thing that make them believe more. You know what I mean? So some people need to hear from other people. They need to read. They need to, you know, watch documentaries or yeah. whatever. However you, you know, talk to the therapist or however you want to get through it. But that's the only thing that can stop a person is themselves, honestly. That's, I agree. I, I agree. I definitely agree. Do you feel and then the And then, you know, the world we live in, I don't want to get too deep, but the world we nah, live in ahead. is, <laughs> the world we live in has created something where they make people, they divide you by classes. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, this person got all this money. Now, they capable of doing it. No, you can only work. No, they did it too. So yeah, you could do it, but they've created like something where you feel like that's the right way to go. Mm-hmm. That's the only way to go. So it's that's and that's a widespread that that's hard to get by too. That's hard to get by. And what's hard to get by? Like that mindset that yeah. the world has created. Yeah. Like the leaders of where, wherever it started, I don't. <laughs> I haven't gone back that far and read, but wherever it started, um, where they created civil civilization, I guess mm-hmm. you can call it. They made it so where they had people in order, but it kind of has its good things and a negative impact as well. As far as people' mental state, not yeah. believing they can do something as well, yeah, that they want to do, you know what I mean? Yeah, you felt like oh no, the world said I can only do this. I don't know how to, I don't know how to rap, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's not the only thing. People create anything, bro. Somebody made this tripod right here. The company that mm-hmm. made that, that man doing it, probably doing his thing. Right yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that. Like it's a million other things we do. We just gotta tap into ourselves and really. Go for it. That's it. But then what would you say to a person who who responds to that with, you know, not everybody, not everybody's like you, you know, not everybody can just motivate themselves. Not everybody, you know, the world, the the, the influence of the world and, and, and the way the world can discourage you affects them more than you. What do you what do you say to a person who says that response to you with that? I I would understand their point of view or try to understand. And I also would explain to them like if you could say that everybody else ain't me or everybody else ain't whoever said they self motivate or you know what I mean? If you could sit there and, and say that then you can bring your mind to a point where you can believe in yourself as well. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you see, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard for people to really understand. It's not that simple. Like, you know, people got their day-to-day. They might be, it's basically, it's, it depends on what they basing their mental things on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, some people might be, Mentally going through it because they're not financially stable. Yeah. Because financial factors are definitely, they they definitely play a part in not being able to do the things that you want to do or the things that you need to do even. Right, right. So you got to, it's going to take a minute. It's going to be a struggle, but you have to do those, take those steps to get to where you need to be. I mean... I would just give them some positive advice, you know. Yeah. Take it slow, maybe. Yeah. Or try to do different things every day. Put yourself in a different mindset. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Just try to do something different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, instead of eating eggs and bacon in the morning, 
go run, eat toast. I don't know. Yeah. Some, anything, bro. Yeah, switch, like, up, switch up your routine. Yeah, switch up the routine mm-hmm. or just try this. You know what I mean? That's what I would, my advice would be. I, you know, and I always tell people like when I make trying to, you know, help them out or motivate them. This is how I feel. You don't have to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because people take that the wrong way. Everybody's like, you trying different. to tell me what to do. No, this is how I yeah. feel about it. And try, just try it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I understand what you, because I've been there, but just try to do this. You know what I mean? I feel like you should try. I feel like you should try to do this. And then you, you take mm-hmm. it from there, you know? That's it. That's my response. So, yeah. Right, you know? I want to go back to subject matter and just just content you got a song you got a song entitled world on fire that you wrote in 2020 in response to what i would assume is in response to social uprisings across america after the murder of george floyd and brianna taylor do you think that artists have a social responsibility um no no they don't I don't feel like they do have the responsibility to to speak up, uh, uh, speak up and speak out against injustices. No, I don't feel like they have the responsibility to. I don't feel like they do, but the person I am, I would, yeah. I would, yeah. you know what I mean. But I don't feel like it's my responsibility to. I just, I decide to do that. I yeah. decide to speak up. But there's other ways you can help as well without, you know, speaking up. You know what I mean? You could money ain't everything, but you could donate money to a group yeah. that's based off that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? To help them out and do what they mm-hmm. do. You might not be a part of it. You know what I mean? It's not nobody's responsibility to, but the person I am, I would. And going back to that song, it wasn't really my response. Yeah. So I was speaking on how people are feeling. Yeah. People's reactions to the yeah. different different forms of protests. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. I wasn't just saying I'm gonna be out there doing. You know, yeah. setting the world on fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was more like I was just speaking on what's going on. You were speaking from the perspective of you were giving. Yeah. I got that. Yeah. yeah. You were speaking from the perspective of the people who were on the front lines. But if an artist has if an artist historically and, and consistently makes music, socially conscious music, I kind of hate the term conscious rap, but the way I see it is just a rapper. Yeah. Um, but if somebody consistently makes socially conscious music and the public just always expects them to make that kind of music. Yeah. What about them? Do you think that they have a social responsibility? If, yeah, if you monetize enough, those type of things, like sometimes those type of artists may be at a a rally performing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I feel like, yes, you you should, you're, you're a part of that move. <clears throat> they, they helped you get to another level in your career. Like, they as in? Not they, but the people that, you know, if you associated with yourself with people that that's what they do, they stand up for what's going on. They into speaking in social injustice and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, like I was explaining, like some people return, I mean, perform at a rally or something like that. You know what I mean? If you one of those artists, I feel like, yes, you should, you should speak out against that. Yeah. Cause you, you was a part of that mm-hmm. just now when the music was popping. So yeah, you should, you know what I mean? When it's just for the people, mm-hmm. you should go out there and, and do so. You should. That's how I feel, though. You don't have to. It's not your responsibility. That's just how I feel, though. Yeah. This, I mean, that's fair. It's definitely. It's only right. It's only right. <laughs> it's only right. If that's what you're portraying, like you know, I'm I'm for this. You know. What yeah. I mean? If that's what the music is about, then it. Sh- I feel like the music should be you, who you are. And if that's what you're portraying out, if you just rap it and you ain't never say this was me, then it's whatever. But if you if that's what you put out there, like yo, this is me, this is how I feel, yo. This is this came from my mind and yeah. my thoughts. Nobody else. It's only right. Um
do you think that as time goes on and, and you you're a rapper who relies heavily on 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 you know having substance in your music the time that we live in now there are artists who have substance in their music but they're not as they're not as commercially successful there's anomalies you have j cole you have kendrick lamar you have uh There's, I guess you could say a lot of artists in Dreamville, but on a commercial level, that's not really as viable. Uh, do you think that you have a place in this in this world of hip hop? Like, what what do you think your lane is? Because you said you're in your own lane. What what exactly is your lane? Something new. I feel like it's something new. Something that's just me. You know what I mean? It's just me. I don't know how to really explain that. You know what I mean? It's just who I am. Uh, and as far as commercial success, I feel like... Do you I, want that? I feel like it's it's different now. Like, the commercial success is basically just who's the most popular. Yeah. You know what I mean? It don't even have to be off the music. We got mm -hmm. pop, commercial popular yeah. people out there. You know what I mean? So I feel like if my goal, if I reach my goal, then that's all that really matters. That's all that really matters. What's your goal? My goal is to have people come out and see me on the tour. Yeah. That's my main goal. Like, I want to go on tour. Yeah. You know what I mean? People come out and pay for the show, bought merch. Yeah. Things like that. That's it, man. If I can get that <clears throat> consistently. Fan base. That's it's it. It's a real support. Yeah. Yeah. Organically, though. Yeah. Not even paid for, none of that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get that organically. Um. That's that's my goal right now. My main goal. Um, as far as commercial success, I feel like that comes. That's, just, that's more of the production of the music. Mm-hmm. Um, what type of song it is? It could have substance, but the way you, like I said, the way you said it's the, it, it's the, the packaging. Yes, yeah. the way you, the way you say things. I, I want divulge more on that. Just yeah. the way things are said, because I always felt like hip hop is a genre. It's not like any other genre of music in the world because it's about how you say things rather than what you're actually saying. Because if you are a singer. It's a more straightforward genre of music, whether it's whether it's R and B or country. It's more straightforward. It's not as as coded. It's not as uh, colloquial. You know, uh, yeah. not as much slang. With with hip hop, it's like a coded language <clears throat> for people from a certain world. So, how important is that? Just you know, do you do you feel that? How you say things are more important than being witty or or being um, you know being overly wordy, rapping fast. Yeah, I feel like it all plays it all creates it all plays its part in one thing, which is creating a great song. Yeah. Um, if you could put all those elements into the song, then that's. That'll give you commercial success, I feel yeah. like. If you could figure out, that's, you know what I mean? That's basically producing a song. Produ pr producing a song that's, you know, it's, it has everything, has all the qualities to make a hit. It's catchy. It got bars in it mm -hmm. here and there. Oh, he said that crazy. Mm -hmm. It might have been the bar, but the way he said it was fire. Yeah. He, he, the way he rapped on the beat was perfect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even what the engineer did on the beat, the mix, all that stuff plays a part into creating a, a great song or a hit. How do you how do you balance being being true to yourself, but at the same time, well, being true to yourself might not resonate with the public as well. 
So how do you balance, if you even want to do that, even if you even want to balance, how do you balance being true to yourself with your content and making music that's easily digestible? You always, I feel like if you're not true with yourself, then at some point it's just not going to work for you. Yeah. It's like you always got to be true to yourself no matter what. Um, and that comes easy for me because I like all type of music. You know what I mean? So I could be true to myself and still, you know, make a song that they may not consider like, you know, uh, real hip hop or yeah. whatever. But, um, yeah, but I, there's no balance in that. You got to always be true to yourself. Yeah. That's the balance. Always be true mm. to yourself no matter what. And whoever comes, comes. If they like it, yeah, they like it. If they don't, they don't. That's it. Mm-hmm. Somebody gonna like it. Mm-hmm. That's true. There's so many people in the world. Somebody's gonna like it. <laughs> For sure. If it's good quality, if it's that's the only thing that matters. Always be true to yourself. Cause that's where the mental the mental blocks come. If you yeah. spend a lot of time not being true to yourself, you're gonna reach a point where it's just you're gonna break down. Cause it's like this ain't me. If you care. Because some people might not care about that. But they that's who they are. It. They yeah. just fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's who they are. <laughs> I'm fake. That's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they, they reached the point with saying, look, I'm going to just be fake. That's, it. that's who I am. I'm just a fake guy. Or fake, you know, whatever. That's, you know what I mean? That's who they are. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> that's... <laughs> It's like I got caught being fake. Yeah, I know they caught me being fake the other day, but yeah, they caught me. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like just admitting to it. Like, I'm gonna continue. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> if it works, it works. <laughs> mm-hmm. Name of this podcast is Words Matter, of course. What do words matter to you, and why do words matter to you? Say it again. So the name of this podcast is Words Matter. Yeah. What do words matter to you? And and why do words matter to you? Words matter because um, obviously it's it's the language. This is how we communicate. Yeah. Um, And everybody is entitled to how they feel. Um, And everybody deserves the opportunity to tell their story. So I feel like that's why words matter. Um, Also, words matter in another way where the way way people uh, react to words as well. So the way, you know what I mean? You may have said it, the English language, every language is, is tricky. You know, you might say it a certain way or the timing of it was off. You know yeah. what I mean? And the people took it the wrong way, but that's not how you felt. But um, that's why words matter. And what do words matter? What do words matter? That's a good question. What do words matter? What you mean exactly when you say that? Um, I yeah, I guess you could just keep it at you know why? Just why? Yeah, why do words matter? That's fine. That's fine. Where are you headed? I'm headed to whatever I work towards. That's where I'm headed. Whatever I work towards is where I'm headed. Um, honestly, this this when this year came, it wasn't like a New Year's resolution or nothing. But I just felt like I just gotta go with the flow more and not be too thinking, not think too much. You know what I mean? Just go with the flow. As long as I follow my, the steps of my plan, whatever comes out to it, you'll learn. If you take a loss, it's a lesson. Yeah. You know what I mean? I gotta, I said, turn bullshit to blessings, losses to lessons. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where I'm headed. That's where I'm headed. And what's next for JR Dion? What's next is tour, merch coming, more shows, more music. Um, I'm gonna learn the science of the music, mm. do some audio engineering. Uh, 
And I'm gonna just dive deep into the thing I love most, which is music. Like yeah. every aspect of it, I want to be a part of that. Yeah. Like the business, whatever, whatever it is, I just want to be a part of yeah. it. That's what's next for me. Thank you, man. Thank no, you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. This was yeah. dope. This was yeah. Dope. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming. It's been a long time. Happy to see you. You know, you're looking the same. You're still, you're still sticking with the music, which is which is very admirable. You know, just people just staying the course with the things that they love. Um, and uh, yeah, just thank you for coming to Words Matter. Thank you for coming to Words Matter. Coming down here. For sure. It's a it's it's a long commute depending on where you come from. So. Now we Thank here, you, we man. here. <laughs> All right. And uh, tell everybody uh, where they can reach you, social media, everything. All right. Well, y'all can follow me everywhere at J-R-D-O-N. That's J-A-Y-R-D-I-O-N. That's J A Y R D I O N. Every platform is the same. Champagne Spiller, the album coming Friday, January 21st. Streaming everywhere. Um, and more in store, man. Just stay tuned. Follow me on my social media for updates, things like that. And we going up. All right, man. Thank Happy. you. <laughs> Words matter. All right.